Welcome to my presentation. Today I will discuss about the first Laplace solver in DL2. Uh, it's one of the uh, example uh, problem uh, which is step 3 in DL2 packages. So first of all I will talk about the, some of the uh, theory uh, behind that. So uh, it's about the uh, Laplace solver and how to uh, make a mesh and uh, I will discuss about the introduction and um, show the uh, explanation of the code uh, as example and uh, I'll show how to run it and also how uh, the how uh, will be the result if we change the source code well uh, well uh, for the for this problem the review of mathematical view of step one uh, is also recapped here again and the basic concept of uh, mesh generation uh, has been uh, discussed here too so um, previously uh, we have learned that in if the uh, grid refinement a uh, numbers are very important for uh, selecting the mesh here so here we can see that uh, there are uh, five the uh, refinement number is 5 so uh, yeah 5 to the power uh, yeah uh, previously it was if the n is equal to sorry if the n is equal to 2 then it was uh, 16 uh, if the n is equal to 4 then it was uh, uh, 60 uh, 256 and uh, now uh, it's now actually if it's 5 then it is 5 to the power 3 and okay so I'm sorry that will be uh, 5 to the power uh, four and now this uh, problem is a problem that has been recapped and inter interpreted from this reference uh, and a professor of Texas a and uh, professor Bengard and uh, um, yeah this <coughs> video is a recap of the math 676 uh, lecture so however uh, uh, let's get the uh, problem I will talk about the basic uh, basic of mesh generation here the equation solver how to uh, solve the equation uh, I will recap it again because uh, this will be uh, 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 this is actually quite significant for understanding the code and how the linear system is set up uh, solving the uh, linear systems and the visualization the data this is a picture you, uh, you can see here the uh, types of the mesh uh, generated here and the uh, uh, nature of the mesh uh, which is uh, uh, created here so yeah from the mathematical viewpoint I am recapping this one again so uh, previously I, I have uh, uh, I have explained that how to develop a mesh, how to enumerate the degree of freedom of a mesh, and how to build a matrix uh, structure for the sparsity uh, pattern uh, from a last plus operator. Now for the step three, the, um, uh, we will learn how the bilinear form can be turned into uh, a form that will be collected for the sum over the cell. And uh, actually, after uh, creating a mesh, uh, we can get the sum of over the shell. Yeah, if the mesh's uh, condition is like that, then yeah. So uh, we can see the sum. Yeah, we can see the sum uh, over the shell here. Uh, and uh, say, for example, um, 
if there are a hundred degree of freedom in the mesh then uh, there will be hundred into hundred uh, matrix so uh, in the hundred into hundred matrices the loops over the i and loops over the i and j uh, yeah this is phi i and uh, phi i and phi j loops over the phi and j and or the double loop over the i and j can be integrated for every cell that would be outermost loop over a, a hundred uh, uh, what can i say that would be the uh, outermost loop over a run hundred uh, hundred uh, iteration in the uh, innermost the middle loop over j would run over uh, 100 iteration and the innermost over all the cells would run over uh, 80 that would be uh, so wasteful uh, because this uh, this phi uh, if i talk about the phi one then very uh, for uh, cell k yeah uh, if I talk about this one for cell K, um, if I talk about just uh, phi i, then just a few uh, phi i will be uh, non zero. So we will consider i and j which are uh, on the cell. If we uh, consider Uh, yeah, if you consider a triangle, then uh, by so uh, by applying the p1 um, finite element, then we can get one, two, three, three, um, three elements. Uh, on the other hand, if we consider about um, a four uh, shape function on a plane, uh, uh, like yeah, if I think about this one, one, two, three, four, this one. Uh, sorry, this one, one six eight five one. So if I talk, uh, consider about four shape function on a plane, then there might be a hundred by hundred matrix uh, which can have the hundred uh, degree of freedom. So uh, the given cell, uh, if the given cell is uh, since uh, all the matrix cannot be uh, uh, calculated because uh, for not having the uh, uh, non-zero uh, phi value so given uh, say for example if we think about the given cell 4 by 4 uh, then we can get the uh, namely 160 matrix uh, 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 60 matrix entries that is not zero then uh, we can get build the 4 by 4 uh, dense sub matrix and then uh, if we consider about 80 cell from uh, from that uh, condition then the entries will be 80 into 16 and it also works for i was talking about for the left hand side so it uh, it all also work for the right hand side too so yeah <coughs> if we think about this triangle then uh, if uh, we uh, consider about three axes x uh, sorry uh, what can i say i j and uh, k uh, that means three axes then the matrix would be three by three matrix uh, where um, these three nodes are considered uh, otherwise all other are zero so if we uh, apply the q1 again then we can get the degree of freedom and uh, if we uh, get the four then we can say it is quadrilateral for 3d if it's th nine then we can get the uh, 27 and yeah it will build the uh, uh, coordinates locally in uh, by i and j well we cannot integrate the exact <coughs> value because uh, the principle doesn't uh, allow that uh, but we can we cannot go and solve and integrate uh, this uh, figure uh, to get the exact value 
but uh, we can follow the quadrature rule here so in the quadrature rule uh, here you can see the uh, jacobian uh, inverse jacobian uh, x, x q we are applying the x q here and uh, yeah this is the this is the function for mm, phi uh, bar i and this are the function for phi bar j and uh, this uh, determination of jk uh, x bar q and uh, whitening function wq uh, which is uh, in short jxw that can be regarded as the uh, dx so remember that we, we, we will discuss it about uh, we will discuss it in the uh, explanation of the code uh, well in every uh, cell the um, what the problem uh, for the quadrature rule is uh, quadrature rule is we can get the same result for every uh, every cell but in that case that said um, we can uh, can evaluate uh, the value for the reference cell too so let's get to the code here yeah in the deal to uh, um, website we can get the code uh, for is this the step one two uh, okay so this is basically uh, depends on the step this is what I have talked about uh, the uh, left hand side will uh, this one and the right hand side will be the this one and there uh, the left hand side uh, will be uh, regarded as two uh, uh, two conditions phi n uh, phi i and phi j and uh, this is the right hand side conditions uh, well if we multiply it uh, from the left side uh, then we can get it this value however if we go for the uh, um, summation of this integration uh, for for the value of k uh, where the k is the cell number and yeah this will be yeah this portion uh, depicts the figure of the summation according to the uh, Gauss quadrature rule where, uh, where you can see there are two parts uh, phi i and phi j and these parts will be regarded as the uh, dx value and we will uh, think about the right hand side later so these are the mm, course for block by block and what about the result here the result of the of this simple Laplace uh, problem will be like that we will get a solution bt uh, dot btt um, uh, file and we, for visualizing we will use the para view uh, in the deal too which is uh, free and we can get the results uh, like that in the btq uh, btk um, file we can get the uh, details results and also in the terminal there will be some results too so how about discussing this is a mesh and how about discussing the <coughs> plane program here So in the plane program, instead of procedural programming of previous examples, uh, they encapsule everything into class for this program actually. So if I discrete this program into uh, certain sections, then these include files are already known to you uh, known to you because uh, i have uh, discussed it in the uh, step one uh, they declare the class uh, 
they actually declare the classes here the grid generator uh, degree of freedom handler that means it will um, um, the degree of freedom will track the degree of freedom of the cell and the grid generator it will uh, mm, generate the grids so and also uh, it will declare that uh, it is creating the grids here and for the next three this fe um, slash underscore sorry fe underscore q dot h uh, this file contains the description of the uh, Lagrange interpolation and what are the others here maybe yeah the degree of freedom tools so this file is needed for the creation of sparsity patterns of sparse matrices as shown as uh, the previous uh, example and then if if values then uh, this if e values and uh, quadrature uh, lib.h uh, these two files are needed for assembling the matrix using quadrature on each, each cell the classes declared in them will be explained below and how about function h uh, okay yeah how about this function h uh, this uh, vector tools and matrix tools so these three actually include the files we need for treatment of the boundary values and for vector A's uh, full matrix sparse matrix sparsity pattern solver and precondition dot age actually uh, the second to the last group uh, of the include uh, files is for the linear uh, algebra which we employed uh, to solve the system of the equations arising from the finite element discretization of the Laplace equation so we will use the vectors and the full matrices for assembling the uh, system of the equations locally on uh, each cell that transfer the results into a sparse matrix we will uh, then use the conjugate gradient solver to solve the problem uh, for which we need preconditioner uh, well and for the last portion uh, which is numerics data underscore out dot h uh, finally, it is for the output file <coughs> to console and what about the using the name deal 2 i and this is to import the deal 2 namespace for global scope. So let's get to the class step 3, uh, public step 3 and the burden, uh, yeah, uh, this section. So what this section actually uh, means is instead of actually the procedural uh, programming of previous examples uh, this encapsulates everything into a class first in uh, into this program then the class consists of the function yeah the class uh, consists of the functions which uh, each uh, perform uh, certain aspects of the certain uh, element of program a main function which controls uh, here the main function the last of all uh, so what about the main function the main function we uh, it controls actually what is in the first yeah the step 3 Laplace problem Laplace problem run uh, what is done uh, in the first and here in these positions and what is done in the next 
this is the reflection of the main function and the public part here what is the public part Uh, I will go to the, uh, discuss the public part. So, um, this part uh, of the class is rather short. It has a constructor. Yeah, it has a constructor and a function uh, run. Yeah, what is run? You can get that from this hyperlink. Uh, it is called from the outside and the x uh, as something like the main function so uh, it coordinates which operations of this class shall be run uh, in which order so everything else in the class uh, maybe all the functions that actually do anything are in the private section of the class this one So there are the classes which is in the private uh, portions, the make grid, setup system, assembly system, solve and output of that. Okay. So there are the numbers of functions I have talked about the this one. So this suggests that um Actually, I have discussed it earlier. They do not need to be uh, called from the outside. They are made private to this class. So, and uh, finally, the triangulation. Well, the triangulation uh, here, for, uh, uh, the number between two angled um, uh, bracket defines whether it's 2D or 3D or, yeah, something like that. So, it finally, um, we have some member of variables here we have some member of variables there are variables describing the triangulation and global uh, numbering and a degree of freedom so we can change this one according to the uh, problem it actually specify exact polynomial degree uh, degree of freedom of finite element in the constructor in the class so yeah so this uh, is sparsity pattern and the sparsity matrix so these variables are sparsity patterns and matrix these results form actually the discretization of the uh, laplace equation and after that the vector double and uh, yeah, vector double solution and system for right hand side. Uh, it holds the right side and the solution of the vector. That's it. And if we go to the next options, then we can get the constructor here. It doesn't much more than the first two specify that we want bilinear element and uh, which indicates is uh, the polynomial degree basically so it also associated with the degree of freedom uh, variable the triangle we use uh but the degree of freedom doesn't care uh, so far it only wants to know which triangulation it will be associated with it only starts to care about uh, the actual mesh uh, once we try to distribute degree or uh, distribute the uh, what can i say the degree of freedom on the mesh using the distribute the degree of freedom functions so all the uh, all other members variables of the step three 
uh, SFC class uh, have a default constructor. So now we will go to this version. We have got to do to generate the triangulation on which we would like to uh, do our computation number is vertex with a degree of freedom we have seen that these two steps are step one and here these two steps step uh, what can I say the step uh, one and step two before we have discussed uh, respectively uh, we have got yeah the same uh, procedure uh, they generate the triangulation on which we would like to do our computation and the number of the vertex and this function this function uh, uh, this first part creating the mesh we create the grid and refine the cells pipeline and we create the grid refine the um, five times we can get to the four times as we want uh, so since the initial grid which is the so uh, square of minus one comma one so we can change the square two uh, it consists of the uh, one cell actually and the final grid would be 32 cells for total um, if we get 5 to the power 4 then we, we can get the uh, sorry I'm sorry for the introduction all it may be 2 to the power 5 if it's 5 then it would be 2 to the power 5 then that would be 100 and 24 okay I'm sure 124 is the correct number maybe we can check by outputting the number of the cells using the uh, yeah we will get the output using the number of active cells so we will get the number of active cells after running the program Then for the next options, here you can say that the output of this is a uh, number of degree of the freedom, uh, which uh, distribute the degree of the freedom, it, it um, tracks the degree of the freedom of the nodes, and uh, th uh, they have used the dynamic sparsity pattern which is a function we can get uh, dynamic sparsity function uh, for uh, it is a public type which is based on the uh, size type or iterator or constant iterator so what they have used here they have used the degree of freedom Okay, it will be expressed like this. The dof uh, handler dot n on the dof, and uh, we will apply the degree of freedom tools and make sparsity pattern, and we will define the degree of freedom handler, dynamic pattern, and constraints. How about this one? Uh, the same okay system of the matrix and the other one so now the triangulation in the active cells here The triangulation in the active cells uh, 
rather than the triangulation of N cells where active actually means the cells that are not refined and any further that we, we are talking about because uh, if there are 100 by 100 matrix all the cells uh, will not give the non-zero value for phi, phi i so uh, yep the active means the cells are not refined any further we assess the uh, in, in this one the adjective uh, sorry uh, active since there are more cells uh, so namely the parent cells of the finest cells they are parents etc up to one cell which uh, made up the initial grid of course uh, on the next quartz uh, level and the number of cells is uh, one quarter of the cells on the finest level that means that it would be uh, 256 or uh, 64 or uh, 4 uh, depending on the triangulation uh, depending on the triangulation and the refined global yeah this value so next we will enumerate the degree of the freedom that I have called um, uh, in this class before uh, we will use the dynamic viscosity pattern okay now there would be some distribute degrees of freedom for final element how uh, user there should be some degree of freedom for each vertex so since we have 32 times so 32 grid the number of degree of freedom should be 33 times 33 so that means 189 so oh, we have seen the previous example we set a sparsity pattern by first creating the temporary structure taking the those entries and that might be non-zero and then copying the data over the sparsity pattern object and uh, that can be used by the system matrix okay this one well for the system matrix re in it for this one so the sparsity pattern object doesn't hold the values of the matrix it only stores the places where the entries are okay the entries themselves are stored in the object uh, of the type sparse uh, matrix uh, which we are variable system matrix is one so i was talking about this one in the previous lecture where it will be stored in the complex row format or in the uh, array uh, well <coughs> so the distinction between the sparsity pattern yeah uh, the sparsity pattern and the matrix was made to allow the several matrices to use same sparsity pattern this may not seem relevant here but when the uh, when it is considered that the size which matrices can have uh, and that it may take some time to build a specific pattern this becomes important in large scale of problem so if we uh, have to store several matrices in our program then it is needed this is okay okay i'm sorry and uh, this one the matrix we need specific pattern uh, now the last thing for this function is to set the sizes of the right hand side uh, yeah this is for the right side and vector and the solution vector to write values 
so here are the void step three and the void step three for right hand side uh, for the output here so if you, we get into that void step three uh, we can in general say that um, this approach is to assemble matrices and the vectors is to loop over all the cells well if there are 100 by 100 matrices then we need to loop over all the cells here that we have discussed before and on each cell this computes the contribution of the cell of uh, the cell to the global matrix and right hand side by the quadrature well uh, the point to realize now is that we need the values of the shape functions at locations of the quadrature points on the real cell okay but both finite ele uh, element shape functions as well as the quadrature points are only defined on the reference cell so if they are uh, of a little help to us then we will uh, hardly ever query information about the infinite element shape functions or quadrature points from the object directly so rather what is required uh, is to uh, is to map yeah, um, this data we will map this data and this equations data uh, from the reference cell to the real cell so the classes that uh, that can do the uh, drive yeah the classes here maybe yeah, yeah. well classes uh, can derive uh, from the mapping uh, mapping class so uh, though one again often doesn't have to deal with the, uh, them directly many functions in the library can make a mapping object or an argument but when it is omitted then they simply resort to the uh, standard bilinear q1 mapping so we will go to this route and uh, not to bother with for the uh, for the moment we come back to this uh, well, we may discuss it about the later examples so what we have to do now is the collection of three classes okay uh, we will go for the connection of three classes update values update gradients and update jwx values so a finite we will deal with the finite element quadrature mapping objects and just too much maybe so there is uh, one type of class that uh, orchestras the information exchange between uh, the three uh, the fe values class and also if given on instance of each three of the objects then uh, to an implicit uh, linear mapping uh, can be obtained it will be able to provide with the information about values and the gradients of the shape functions and the quadrature points of the real cell so if we go to the assemble system then is, uh, we will assemble the linear system for the problem in the following function so let's start it for this one how about the, this one it is actually we need to we need a quadrature from the right so for the evaluation of the uh, integrals on each cell let's make a uh, Gauss formula with two quadrature points in 
is directional. So if we change that too, then we can get the uh, uh, we can change. Uh, what can I say? Uh, we, we can change the dimension. Okay. So this quadrature formula in J is the polynomial degree up to three exactly in one dimension. So it is easy to check that this is sufficient for the present. Now this is for the finite element values for the quadrature formulas that will be departed into three uh, three sections since it's so long so I will skip it and there are the unsigned degree of freedom parcel so for n cells uh, find an element in a degree of freedom parcel here so we can get full matrix cell matrix of degree of freedom and parcel here the double one is like that so here uh, we can see that for the cell matrix zero um, the reset of the local cells contribution to global matrix and the global right and this side is zero uh, and before we fill them now we can get yeah, here so it is time to start the integration over the cell which we do looping over so the quadrature points uh, we will use the number of q index yeah this q index so this is the quadrature of the phi i this is the graph quadrature for phi j and this for the dx that i was talking about here phi y phi j and the dx okay then we do the same thing for the right hand side here and here the integral is over the shape functions i times the right uh, hand side functions so which uh, actually we used to uh, used to be the function with constant value of one okay so now this one yeah for the, this one the contribution of this cell we have to transfer it the global matrix and the right hand uh, side so uh, we first have to find out which global numbers and the degree of freedom on this cell have uh, let's simply uh, simplify the uh, cell for the information so for here in this upper loop then this is loop again uh, uh, for the shape function for i and j and transfer the local elements uh, to the global matrix the global numbers can be obtained using the local uh, degree of freedom indices one so it is almost end then for the right hand side uh, we do the same thing again for the right hand side in the side vector and for the matrix tools here and this is uh, the uh, output we will get and this is the vector tools and these are the matrix tools so the list of the boundary degree of freedom and their respective boundary values let's use them to modify the system of the quadrature accordingly and this is done actually following this call well now these are the solvers now and section these are the solver sections and for the shape 3 these are the output sections where we can get the data of 
uh, what is your freedom solutions and the solution dot uh, btk file btk file and uh, uh, data of the btk uh, so yeah in the we are almost finally uh, the last function of this class is the main functions which calls all the other functions of the code except three and a code class or something like that and the order in which this is done resembles the order in which most finite uh, element programs work so since the names are mostly self-explanatory explanatory so this is not much to co uh, comment about so i will skip that and in the main section we can get the results like that however we will go to the file how to run it let's get to the file okay so here is step 3 build to build to examples step 3 there are the documents and uh, how about the results the results will be like this manner so let's try it okay uh, okay so how we can go for it well, i am opening a terminal here so that i can i may not have either change directory so c make i'm c making it so these are the cmake file then since there is a make file so i will make it m a k e okay m a k e make and it may take some time depending on the machine we are using so i will the make is complete so i will run it dot slash dot slash step three the name of the file of the code so you can see that the active cells have 124 and 189.129 the starting value and the convergence of the 48 value so how about the values here so if i it's ls i'm sorry ls ls then we can get this one the solution btk btk file and uh, let's let's open the solution btk file so we can get the 124 uh, active cells informations and the degree of freedom information something like that and if we go to the and the cell type is like that so there is no visualized data so i will visualize it by para view let's write the para view and okay so i will open the file here btk file okay so i will apply it mm, there seems like some error so yeah these are the mm, uh, this is the result actually so if i go to the well there are various types of options here so i'm going to the this one so 124 ages so we can run this one to change to observe the changes and we can also have the contour so let's think about the contour is that the contour or is for the clip one and there are various types of um, visualization that we want actually so these are the mapping data we can get the number of the table values is 256 uh, okay so let's close it how about if we modify this and uh, this is step three source code now 
this is the same file of the step 3 so I will change the source code here um, I will just change the message number and, uh, and observe what happens so uh, we can also change here the triangulation 3 so we can get the 3d form but it needs to uh, change the boundary conditions that may need some time um, a pretty much time so I will just change the refinement say for example I am going to press 2 here and we can get the uh, triangulation of this one also maybe okay so if I change the refine number and save it then again I will see make it oh, I'm sorry I will see make it and this is their make value uh, make file so I will make the file yeah it's completed so let's run this one So since uh, uh, we had changed the refine number to so two to the four, negative value is sixteen, degree of freedom is twenty five. So what about the solution file here? Let's take a view in the parallel view. Well, uh, we can also change the dimensional uh, value. Uh, it might need time to uh, change the code, and also we can change the. Uh, Here, in the refinement, we can change the triangulation of the points here. So, in that case, there will be another uh, solution. So, yep, I am just demonstrating how the refinement number affects on the uh, solution. So, I don't know why this is happening, this figure is happening. So, yeah, you can see see that how about the edges so there are one two three four one two three four just like the sixth one and the meshes so what about the contour here maybe uh, something like that okay so that's my presentation about the about solving the uh first Laplace solver in guild example step three thank you for staying with me